After losing so many beloved Avengers during Endgame, you might think Marvel fans had suffered enough. But because life is a cruel and unceasing series of tragedies, we're now forced to face a Marvel Cinematic Universe without Spider-Man. Yeah, it's kind of a first world problem, but darn it, we're going to complain about it anyway. But let's not lose hope, because we have some good reasons to suspect the MCU will be able to keep our interest even with the spider-shaped void created by Peter Parker. If you're more of a the universe is half empty kind of person, be sure to check out 10 reasons the MCU is doomed without Spider-Man from our friends at Screen Rant when you're done. Numbers if there's one thing Marvel has never lacked, it's characters. We all know Marvel characters are quality, but darn if they don't also have quantity on their side. Instead of getting caught up on the one character we can't have in the MCU, can we talk about the characters we do have? And no, we're not talking about the less than impressive entries in the Marvel comic book libraries like 3D Man. Well, maybe being in 3D is impressive when you're in a comic book, but when you're on the big screen, not so much. We know the Avengers roster has been looking a little bit sparse since the conclusion of the Infinity Saga, but there are some major players who are now free to join the MCU. Yep, we're talking about characters like the legendary X-Men and Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four. Sure, not every X-Men movie has been great, we're looking at you, Dark Phoenix, but this franchise has tons of interesting characters, complex storylines, and limitless possibilities. As far as the Fantastic Four goes, isn't it about time these guys were done justice on the big screen? Marvel Studios is not hurting for content, and while Spider-Man may be the most popular hero around, he isn't the only well-known crime fighter they've got. Unknowns of course, we love our big name heroes, but let's not forget that even minor players can make a huge impact on audiences. Before Guardians of the Galaxy hit theaters in 2014, most people had no idea who these ragtag group of outer space outlaws even were. Now, Vin Diesel knows how to say, I am Groot in 16 languages, and the Guardians are some of the most popular characters out there. While Marvel Studios has majorly recognizable characters at their disposal, they also have a laundry list of other awesome characters just waiting to be introduced to movie audiences. And if you're a fan of less mainstream characters, you're in luck, because Marvel is going to be hitting Hulu with some awesome new shows available for streaming. Of course, we all know who Howard the Duck is. He's the hero the MCU needs. You know, the guy, the uh, duck, who makes you ask Spider-Man who? In addition to the Howard the Duck show, fans can also look forward to seeing Marvel's MODOK, Hitmonkey, and many more. All-Star Cast We don't think we're underselling it to say that Disney is an absolute industry behemoth. Seriously, these guys are not lacking in resources, and they aren't afraid to spend money to make money. Well, unless it comes to forking over the cash to keep Spider-Man in the MCU, but we digress. Those sweet, sweet Disney bucks means hiring talented performers to bring your favorite comic book characters to life. The Eternals has legendary actress Angelina Jolie as Thena, and Game of Thrones alumni Richard Madden and Kit Harington as Icarus and the Black Knight, respectively. Finally, we can hear Kit Harington say something besides, I don't want it. Ugh. Of course, we know you can have an all-star cast and still make a terrible film, but historically, that hasn't been the case in the MCU. There's always been a good mix of recognizable names and up-and-coming talent. Before the first Thor movie, American audiences had no idea who Tom Hiddleston and Chris Hemsworth were. Now we have Academy Award-winning actor Matt Damon playing Loki as a one-off joke in Thor Ragnarok. Outside of a few stars who didn't work out like Edward Norton and Terrence Howard, Marvel has an excellent track record when it comes to casting, and the budget to get pretty much anyone they want on board. Diversifying just how all-encompassing is the MCU? Well, that's a question some fans have struggled with for quite some time. Shows like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones theoretically take place in the MCU, but they don't really cross over with what happens on the big screen. In fact, some fans like to pretend they don't exist and stick strictly to Marvel's theatrical films. Hey, we're not here to argue with anyone's headcanon. But Disney is interested in diversifying and expanding the reach of the MCU even further. Their Disney Plus streaming platform is going to feature shows about characters movie audiences are quite familiar with. These include The Falcon and The Winter Soldier, WandaVision, Loki, and Hawkeye. 
Sure, the What If series is just for funsies, but it seems like for the most part, these shows are meant to bring meaning into the MCU. Disney is going to be doing more than showcasing heroes who exist in a shared universe. They're going to be intertwining stories on both the big and small screens, and we couldn't be more excited about it. Scope there are so many reasons to love Spider-Man, and we have a feeling we don't have to bother going over them for our CBR fans. But let's not forget that despite his brief stint in space, he's still the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's a New York City staple, and up until now, that's where a lot of the action in the MCU has taken place. But the MCU is getting bigger and bigger, and the scope is ever expanding. The Eternals will fill in gaps in the cosmic history of the MCU, and we're still looking forward to more space-centric movies like Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 and Captain Marvel 2. And let's not forget that the MCU is a multiverse, even if it hurts to remember how excited our sweet Peter Parker was about that concept during Far From Home. In Phase 4, we're getting Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And we don't think it's reaching to suggest this movie might take the idea of the multiverse further than we've seen so far. The MCU is a massive place spanning across space and time. If you zoom out enough from planet Earth, you might not even notice the fact that one arachnid-themed superhero is missing. Box Office At the end of the day, we all know Disney is about making money. That's why they couldn't iron out the details on this Spider-Man deal in the first place. But just because Spidey's now relegated to the Sony universe of Marvel characters doesn't mean the MCU's box office has to suffer. They have more than enough star power, fans, and exciting content to draw on audiences even without Spider-Man. Far From Home became the first Spider-Man movie to earn over a billion dollars, and became Sony's highest grossing movie when it surpassed Skyfall. Let's compare that to the strictly Sony movie The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which grossed $709 million worldwide and had a net profit of approximately $70.38 million. Then we have Disney's Avengers Endgame, which defeated James Cameron's Avatar to become the highest grossing movie of all time. It's definitely stating the obvious to say that Disney knows what it's doing and how to get people to the movie theater. Just because Sony puts out its own Spider-Man movies doesn't mean people are going to quit the MCU. How much did Spider-Man really affect the box office gross for movies like Captain America Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, or Endgame? Underdog while we firmly believe the MCU will be just fine, we aren't trying to say this isn't a definite blow. Seriously, all those inspiring scenes from Far From Home about Tony leaving the MCU in Peter's hands are pretty much unwatchably sad now. But even though they're cranking out massive money-making hits now, things haven't always been easy for Marvel Studios. Let's not forget that Marvel Comics sold Spider-Man to Sony in the first place because of money trouble. 2008's Iron Man was a massive gamble featuring a troubled actor Hollywood had turned its back on and a superhero most people weren't even familiar with. But Robert Downey Jr. and Marvel Studios shaped the MCU into what it is today, despite the odds. The movie Avengers Endgame was a great film, but it was also a massive cinematic achievement and not just because it raked in a cool billion at the box office. The MCU has faced challenges before, and it's managed to get through and come out stronger than ever before. Losing Spider-Man is definitely a bad thing, but it doesn't have to mean the end of the MCU. Cycle The Lion King did a whole song and dance about the circle of life, but it's a thing in the MCU as well. The fact is that sometimes we lose characters, and while it's sad, it's a necessary part of life, even in fictional worlds. Just look at Avengers Endgame, which meant the end of Tony Stark, arguably the biggest influence of the MCU. We also said goodbye to original Avenger Natasha Romanoff and Steve Rogers is out of commission when it comes to being a hero. These weren't a result of dealings behind the scenes. In fact, originally Clint Barton was going to be the one who made the ultimate sacrifice on Vormir. These losses were made for storytelling reasons, and they're part of the superhero cycle. While the loss of Spider-Man is more sudden and unexpected, it's a fact of life that a hero's journey can end in an instant. It's sad, of course, but sometimes that's just the way the multimedia conglomerate co-venture crumbles, baby. Spider-Man isn't the first MCU hero to be lost, and he definitely won't be the last. Next Generation not only is there definitely a future for the MCU without Spider-Man, but we dare say it looks pretty bright. We are getting tons of new heroes, and we're also getting a new generation of heroes. 
Many fans have been looking forward to seeing groups like the Young Avengers enter the MCU. Thanks to the time skip during Avengers Endgame, it seems like Cassie Lang is pretty much ready to start the superhero career she hinted about during Ant-Man and the Wasp. We also have the Hawkeye streaming show to look forward to, which features Clint Barton training Kate Bishop. While we haven't seen her in the MCU yet, comic book fans know she's an expert archer who takes up the mantle of Hawkeye after Clint passes away. Don't worry, he gets better. Then there's Kamala Khan, who is a young Muslim superhero who goes by the name Miss Marvel. She's going to be featured in one of the many new Marvel shows available on Disney+. Plus. As if we needed another streaming service in our lives. But, you know, we gotta get our superhero fix somehow. So I'll just shut up and take our money, Disney. The fact that Peter Parker is a teenager trying to balance his normal life with his extracurricular activities has always been a large part of his appeal. But by incorporating other younger heroes into the MCU means we can get our fix of teenage drama, angst, and cool superpowers elsewhere. Never Say Never Remember back when Spider-Man had never ventured into the MCU and it certainly seemed as though he never would? After all, why would Sony let Disney use one of their most profitable and iconic properties? Except that they totally did after the disaster which was The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Let's not forget Disney is playing the long game here. While the threat of superhero fatigue is a very real thing, it's not like the MCU is going anywhere anytime soon. They've already announced the next couple years worth of projects, and undoubtedly there are many more in the works that we don't even know about yet. Not that the thought of that keeps us up at night or anything. Sony and Disney making a mutually profitable deal is something that's happened before, and it could definitely happen again at some point in the future. While we know the MCU will be just fine without Spider-Man, that doesn't change the fact that we desperately want the masked web crawler back where we feel in our hearts he belongs. Maybe it's just wistful thinking, but we're holding out hope that Peter Parker will find his way back to the MCU someday. And now that we've given you some hope for the MCU without Spider-Man, be sure to get that hope tested by visiting our good friends over at Screen Rant and watching 10 Reasons the MCU is Doomed Without Spider-Man. It might be a bit more depressing than our video, but it's definitely worth a watch to see both sides of the story. What do you think about the future of the MCU without Spider-Man? Let us know your predictions for the fate of the MCU in the comments section below, and then click subscribe for more videos from CBR. Bye for now!